Our Heavenly Father, in kindness you've given us life, in grace you have given us your Son, in mercy he has redeemed us, in blessing you give us your Holy Spirit and teach us from your word. Praise to you. Father, we are sorry for and repent of all our sins. Forgive us our sins in the name of our Redeemer Jesus. In his name, we forgive others' sins against us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being shepherd and guide to us, leading us through everything. Hear us in our worship this day. Amen. Our reading comes from Luke chapter 8 and reading from verse 26. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, They ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who has paid the debt of sin and given us everlasting life. In the midst of our losses and sorrows in this life, comfort and give us courage as we look ahead to our King and his return. Lord, help and heal those in illness or weakness of body or of mind. Strengthen us to endure the difficulties of life with hope and help us to encourage each other along the way. Lord, when we think of your kindness and willingness to bless, we pray for all who are struggling with worry and fear. Steady and lift their hearts and minds and their spirits and quickly lead them through and out of all that troubles them. Our Father, give to us each what we need for the day. Help us to live quiet and useful lives honouring you and blessing one another. We pray for peace among nations, for the ending of war. We pray for wisdom for leaders and for leaders of godly wisdom. We pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second reading comes from Luke 8 and beginning at verse 40. Now Jesus returned and a crowd welcomed him for they were all expecting him. 
Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him, and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher any more. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John and James and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Amen. Good morning and a warm welcome as we gather again in worship. We are looking at the miracles of Jesus in the account of the Gospel of Luke that we've had read for us this morning. Three miracles and three people. Uh, Gerasene man, the woman who sought healing in secret, and the daughter of Jairus. Three miracles showing Jesus had power over the spiritual realm, the natural realm, and even over life and death. It is too simple to be overawed by the power of the miracles and not see the work of Jesus through them for all the people who needed them. I suppose our first question might be, why would Jesus leave a place of prominent ministry to go to the region of the Gerasenes anyway? It was a region inhabited by Gentiles as well as Jews, and it seems that Jesus was not going to begin a wide ministry there in any case. The answer, of course, is that Jesus went there for this man. As soon as Jesus gets out of the boat, this man comes to him. It seems the demons that drive him are in fear and panic at the arrival of Jesus, and they know who Jesus is and why Jesus has come, that it is for this man. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God, they say, to prevent Jesus from casting them out? to delay the judgment. And Jesus permits them at their request to enter instead the pigs which they then destroy. And why do they do that? Well, probably for exactly the thing which then happens. The people of the town, counting the financial loss and not wanting more, ask Jesus to leave. And so they choose money over salvation, even with the evidence of the man healed and free. But perhaps That was a decision they had already taken. But Jesus planned no wider ministry here anyway. He came for one man, to free him. His life, this man's life, had been dominated and destroyed. For a long time he had been naked and without shelter, living in the tombs like an animal, 
an outcast feared by his community. They chained him up for his own and others' safety away from the village. But he did get loose and wandered off into the wild. His life had been wrecked. And people's lives do get wrecked. I'm sure you've seen it as I have in lots of ways. Ideas and ideologies that lead people to do terrible things to themselves or to others. Addictions that rip their life out of their own hands. There are those, not only demons, but among people too, who wish to possess and ruin others. People's lives do get wrecked. And this wrecked life got saved, rescued. It is easy to get caught up in the power of the miracle or the details of the casting out of demons and lose sight of the work of Jesus for the people themselves. Jesus intended no further ministry here. He did not need to. He had found that deep response that we've been talking about, that seed that grows, that open-hearted soil, that trusting heart. He had found it in this ex-demon-possessed man. And this man would be all the witness needed. And yet, he was not asked to be a witness because Jesus was asked to leave. He was asked to be a witness so that the seed of the truth would grow up and free all of him. Free all of him. And there's a lovely thing here that kind of suggests that indeed that, that seed did grow. Jesus says to him, go and tell what God has done for you. And it says he went into the town and told everyone what Jesus had done for him. His trust and faith is in the Messiah, in Jesus. Jesus comes to save, to utterly save us. And he knows who he's coming to. Then comes Jairus, fretful as any man would be for his only child, his little girl of 12 who lay at death's door. And Jesus, of course, agrees to go. And on the way, he stops the crowd suddenly. A woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, all the years of the little girl's life. She comes quiet through the crowd. She reaches out to just touch the cloak of Jesus and that, that is her prayer. She reaches out to touch the cloak, and that's her prayer. And immediately she is healed. Understand this. For this woman, her bleeding made her unclean, ceremonially, before the temple law. For her, she was permanently unclean. To her, it probably felt like some kind of curse permanently forbidden from her community's faith and worship, let alone the suffering of the illness itself. Of course, she doesn't want to be seen. Her life would have receded into a very small space. She would not even want to be noticed there. But that's no good for Jesus. He came to save. And so he stops. Who touched me, he asks, wanting her to come forward. He is in no doubt. I know that power has gone out from me. Jesus notices the touch of prayer. Jesus, has noticed, Jesus notices any touch of trust and faith and open heart to him. And he has come to save. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people. She told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Seeing she could not go unnoticed. No. She told now in front of all the people what had happened. And Jesus reassures her, her trust was good. 
Her faith, her open heart of faith, led her to do the right thing. She had done no wrong in coming unclean to touch him. And now everyone can rejoice with her. She is clean again, back in the community, publicly, and with the backing of Jesus himself. He came to save us, save us utterly. It is easy to be awed by the miracle and not see Jesus working for the utter saving of these people. It is easy not to see the people. But notice how Jesus does. Notice Jesus. Even as this woman rejoices after a dozen years of hurt, up comes the messengers to say that after a dozen years of life, Jairus' child has died. Jesus turns to Jairus and tells him to trust, to have an open heart of trust, and she will be healed. He also at the house tells the people to stop mourning, for the little girl is not dead but asleep, but they laugh at him, they know she is dead. Jesus only allows the parents and three disciples to be witness to what he does. He commands her to get up, and not only does she breathe again, but she gets up from her bed. And Jesus tells her overjoyed parents to get her some food. Presumably, she has been ill for some time and not eating. Jesus also tells Jairus and his wife not to say what happened. Now, it's, it's not going to be a story that remains hidden but people will make of it what they will. Get her some nice food. She is fine. She's ready to eat. Sit down. Be a family together again. Don't bother telling anyone. Make no show of it. Just you love each other. Look after each other. I suppose if such a thing happened today, we might want to publicize it and make much of it. Jesus did not. It's easy to get overawed by the miracle and miss that Jesus is working always to save these people, utterly save them. Can you doubt that Jairus and his wife and the little girl would not only remember but deepen their trust in Jesus? Can you doubt that that little family would open up their home and their hearts all the wider to him? It is the response that he's looking for. The response of the open heart of trust. Do you get it yet? It is the response of the heart he is seeking, not the crowd, not the acclaim, not the mission, not the organization. Do you get it yet? He comes to save you, to save you utterly. To save your mind, your soul, your life, your home, your family. To utterly save you. Don't just be overawed by the miracle. Notice Jesus. You can bet that they did. The no longer demon-held man, the no longer hurting and excluded woman, the no longer fearing parent, the living child. You can bet they noticed Jesus and how he saved them. What did you imagine Jesus came to do? To hurt? To make you religious? To build a big organization, to get your service. No. Jesus came to save you, utterly save you. It's not the garrison region he came to, it's the one wrecked life. It's not just to take away the pain that he came for. It is to declare you clean and make you stand up before all whole again. 
It was not to get applause or a crowd he came for. It was to see the little family whole again, sitting around him at a little feast. Do you get it? It's a heart thing. His heart for you. To save you utterly. And what he is looking for is the open heart of trust. Don't just be overawed by the miracles or the demon story or anything else. Notice Jesus. Open your heart to him. Let your prayer be a touch at his cloak. Jesus always notices. And it is his heart to save you. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've shown your heart in Jesus to us. Not only in his death, but in all of his ministry, he sought in every way to reach out, to save, to heal heart and mind and body and soul. And so, Lord Jesus, you will, you will raise us into the kingdom that is yours for everlasting life. You intend to save us utterly. In the midst of this world, we carry many faults and sins and grieve over many things. Lord, we reach out to touch in faith and ask our prayer of you. Save us, Lord. Save our hearts. Save our souls. Save our minds. Transform us. Transform us in our families and in our homes. Transform us in our workplaces. Transform our hearts to lay line up with your heart. O oh Lord, save us. Amen.